Hey, yes, yes, y'all. What up, YouTube family? It's Iconic. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the D4 live stream for season two, season of blood that happened today. Taking a look at the patch notes, breaking it down. And I want to know, did they get it right? Let's dive right in. So we've got a lot to cover on this one. And just a preface here, I think it was it was mostly positive. And I think we've got, you know, two or three steps in the right direction here. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. And we're going to break that down in the video here. Um, I'll share my thoughts and my opinions, but there is a lot to cover. So I want to dive in, but you guys let me know what your thoughts were about it. Um, but let's check it out and break it down a little bit. So in the patch notes here, the first thing that they have is about the five new in-game bosses. And I definitely think this is something that could bring some variety to the end game. I don't know how much it's actually going to carry it. I mean, we're going to have to see exactly how it's implemented and having to farm these over and over and get the materials. But um, it definitely seems like it's interesting. So the new boss fights are unlocked based on succeeding in different tasks across Sanctuary with different resources required for facing each boss. And each new fight becomes available as you progress through world tiers three and four. Specific details to encounter each boss can be found in our Season of Blood article. So they actually have two sets of patch notes here. Um, I'm not going to go over the second one except to look at the vampiric powers here. But um, what I thought was interesting is they shared a slide. And I just pulled this from, from Reddit here. So I know it's a little bit hard to read. But what I thought was actually really interesting was how they thought we were playing the end game, especially from 71 to 100, and then what they've added in. So um, prior to them adding in this world boss slide, um, all of these world bosses or in, sorry, in game bosses were gone. And basically, once you got to world tier four, I mean, they made it seem like the in game loop was all right. You're doing whispers and you're farming hell tides and you're doing world bosses and you're going to Legion events and then you're doing nightmare dungeons. And when we actually take a look at it realistically, Basically, all you're doing in World Tier 4 is if you're a little bit under leveled when you come in, yeah, you may do a few whispers to try and get some ancestral gear. Um, Legion events are definitely good to do to try and get some ancestral gear. But as soon as you feel strong enough to hop into the higher tier nightmare dungeons, that that's that's what you do. That's what you're doing. And you're probably not breaking off your grind. Maybe you need to go do some hell tides every once in a while, but it's more to break up the monotony than anything. So now they've actually implemented this to where you have to do this loop so you have echo of varshan um you can do this in world tier three as well as um gregorian you can also do this in world tier three but they reappear i'm assuming harder versions of them in world tier four as well so you get your materials from whispers to be able to do varshan um nightmare dungeons to be able to do the beast and the ice Helltides to do uh, Gregor. And then you're going to have Lord Zir is going to be the, the final kind of in-game boss that's tied to the season. And you're going to get materials from all these bosses to actually fight Uber Duriel. So that gives us a, a little bit more of a loop where you kind of have to do these things now. Um, it should break up the monotony a little bit from, from the actual in-game. And then uber durial has a chance to drop uber uniques all the bosses can actually drop um uber or uniques at this point but the uber uniques can be dropped from durial and from what they said on the stream you're going to actually see people that have these items people in your clan um i'm assuming it's probably going to be i mean the grinders that are really going to farm this boss over and over again because they did not make it sound like it was going to be that high of a drop rate but that the drop rates were going to be increased enough to where you you'd actually be able to see these items drop in game. So kind of curious to see how that goes, but I do enjoy target farming and I don't mind, I don't mind repetitive things, but it does have to be fun. So we'll see if this really does shake things up or not, but there are some other interesting changes too, that could make the overworld a little bit better to actually go out and do now, um, instead of maybe just potentially always doing nightmare dungeons. Um, so we'll take a look at the, what they've changed with the in-game activities here. So Legion events, uh, they've reduced the time from that they pop up from 30 to 25 minutes and you get a warning timer at 10 minutes now instead of five. 
Um, they fixed the display issue too as well, where if a whisper was active, um, you wouldn't see the timer for the Legion event or you couldn't actually see it on the map. This one, I mean, if you want us doing these in-game activities, like I feel like this could be shorter. Like why isn't this every 10 minutes or 15 minutes? Like just have them going all the time to me. Uh, same thing with the world boss here. I mean, these are great changes. Don't get me wrong. They've dropped it from six hours, which is crazy, to three hours and 30 minutes and the warning timer from 30 to 60 minutes. So you definitely have plenty of time to know what's going on. But again, if these are in-game activities that you want us to do, like just make them all the time, like or as much as possible. I'm not sure what the conflict is as to why we can't have these more, but this uh, this is a plus don't don't get me wrong um especially the world boss they've you know taken taken a lot of time off of the world boss spawning um and then same thing they fixed the issue where if a whisper was active um you wouldn't see it on the mini map potentially but where i really think we've got uh, some big w's here is the golden experience they said were significantly increased they specifically used significantly i don't know how many times in the stream to describe this so um, this is going to be for Helltide chests, cashing in grim favors, completing individual whispers. This should hopefully bring it on par to where you can do these events in World Tier 4 and it's on par with Nightmare Dungeons. Um, we're going to have to see how this plays out and, and make sure that it's where we need it to be. Maybe they still need to do some balancing and adjusting, but this actually should give us more activities to do once you get to world tier four instead of just blasting nightmare dungeons um again i still think there's problems in the end game i know that that loop may not be as satisfying but it, it at least gives you another path forward and especially with the end game bosses um, we have we have some more things that we can do this time around experience and monster leveling so this one too i think is actually a huge win because in a season you don't want to take it so long to level and I know people that were blasting the game and playing in groups like they were getting it down, you know, fairly quick. But for the average player, I feel like this was too long. So they're making reaching level 100 about 40 percent faster. Um, another stuck point that I think for people and I've experienced this myself is um, this next one here. The experience gain from killing monsters at level 50 plus has been significantly increased and rises steadily as you level. So I always felt like when I got into world tier three. I usually would do it around level 45, 46, somewhere in there. And then it would feel like I just hit this wall in world tier three because you're not getting as much experience. You start to out level the monsters really quickly. I think I believe is level 55, if I'm not mistaken, like you, you're not getting any more experience and you already know, like all the sacred gear that you're getting is just going to be obsolete as soon as you get to world tier four and you get ancestral gear. So you're kind of in this in-between state that doesn't feel great. You're not running high level nightmare dungeons, so you're not getting too much experience from that either. So I think this is a great change. Um, increasing the monster uh, level experience from level 50 plus and then 40% faster is, is definitely huge. The next one prevents monsters from being less powerful as characters level increases by making monsters in world tier three and four match the current player level at a minimum after levels 55 and 75 respectively this increases the overall experience of leveling making it much smoother this one i think we've got to see in practice um i, I know there there definitely is points in the game where you just don't feel that like you're always kind of behind the monsters and finally you get a big upgrade and you kind of catch up to them and it's like all right, I feel feel OK again. And then, you you know, you make a couple more upgrades and you feel powerful. But then once you start gaining levels again, you're kind of back to like, OK, what what else do I need to grab for my for my build? And eventually you do kind of out level everything once you hit world tier four and you really get your build online. But this this could be a good or a bad change. Um, I'm not I'm not too positive on this. We'll have to check it out and see. Incense now grants bonus XP and persists after death. So for group farms, um, this is going to be great. And then increase the potency of experience bonuses. So they're multiplicative now. Uh, that's definitely a win. We'll take that. Nightmare Dungeons. I feel like they did do a pretty good job here of doing some things to make Nightmare Dungeons not as tedious. So we'll have to see again how this plays out in the game. Does this really make a difference for us? But 
I feel like they're listening and they may might even be playtesting the game now. <laughs> Um, if, if you've done several nightmare dungeons back to back to back to back, you can, you can definitely feel how annoying it is. Avoided some players not getting nightmare sigils from dungeons that have no final boss. So you'll get one, um, at the, at the end of completing a nightmare dungeon now. So pretty good change there. You can never have too many sigils. Objectives have been removed from some dungeons. This is the biggest change and I'm not sure what they're thinking here because if these are like the actual nightmare dungeons that are in rotation this season or if there's like five or ten of them like these are only that everybody's only going to run these dungeons that don't have the objectives nobody wants the objectives for the most part i know for sure i'm going to be looking out for these ones we'll be doing some testing here trying it out but i can't imagine that especially if you're improving monster density like there's no there'd be no reason to run the dungeons that have objectives so hopefully they're taking a deeper look into that and just just get rid of the objectives get them out of here nobody wants to do them multiple nightmare dungeon afflictions have been updated backstabber so you're no longer going to be cc'd by this um, it'll cause you to be vulnerable uh, this and higher level dungeons could one shot you or get you into a chain cc so definitely a good change here monster critical resist We'll play it. We'll try it out. But um, it's going for three seconds now instead of persisting throughout the dungeon for the entire time. So this one was really annoying. It really just stopped your progress. And you didn't want to do this, this affix whatsoever as you're just doing no damage. So again, I, I don't know if this is still an affix you'll want to take, but um, we'll, you know, play around with it. Try it out. Death Pulse prevents death pulses on monsters that have explosions on death, prevent death pulses from spawning repeatedly on top of each other. I can't tell you how annoying this is, especially in the tight corridors or the dungeons that um, have like the rooms inside of them, the small little rooms and you're stuck. You keep, don't really have anywhere to go and there's just explosions going off everywhere that can kill you. Annoying. Lightning Storm. Annoying. Take this out they made this better apparently i mean once you're in the protection dome you get a 35 percent bonus movement speed for five seconds to kind of make up the time you lost i guess that's cool but i'm probably going to be avoiding this one still drifting shade probably going to be uh, ignoring this one too as well but they reduce the duration from five to three seconds respawn time increased by two seconds so we'll see maybe it's a little bit better but yeah, most of, the, most of these affixes that I don't want to run, I'm probably still not going to run. They said they don't want you trashing sigils all the time. And I can't I can't think of why I wouldn't still trash these sigils like I'm, I'm not playing those. Um, they massively reduce backtracking by placing all dungeon objectives on the critical path of a dungeon, making them harder to miss by a making a wrong turn. Uh, many of the layouts have been redesigned improve the overall readability of traps so you can actually see when those are going off end caps have been added to ensure dungeon layouts don't feel too linear and paragon glyph experience have been increased so this is a good change with getting the 40 percent um, additional xp bonus for leveling and they did show the dungeon layout so this does actually look a little bit better because what could happen here is you start at the dungeon and I mean, you start to get familiar with how things are going, but you could come down and maybe accidentally you're going fast and just go down one of these wrong corridors. And then you're like, oh, here's one over here. Here's one over here. Here's one over here. Here's one over here. Oh, I still have one all the way over here. Let me backtrack and then let me come back again. And then we're going to the boss layer. So now you should be able to come in. It's going to be on the main path. So you'll see this first one. You'll see the second one. And then you can either... You know, you can go down this path and then come back and then hit the boss room or you can continue straight. You'll see the next one and then come back and loop up to the boss room. So this should make the objectives a little easier. Of course, again, I'd prefer a dungeon without the objectives myself, but ones that do have objectives, I think this is going to make it a lot better. And then the dungeon events, they're going to make it more worthwhile, increasing monster densities. NPCs should no longer be killed in one shot. I mean, I don't really care about the NPCs. Like, who cares? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you get the same stuff no matter what. Um, but yeah, we'll have to check out the, the density inside the events and, and the dungeons and see what that looks like. 
item adjustments. So they're freeing up inventory space with the gems. Um, they're now a crafting material. And then you can go to the jeweler to actually craft the gems that you need. And if you need to break these down further, you actually don't need that gem. Um, you'll just get some materials back. So definitely a good change here. Maybe free up a little bit more space. Um, for any hardcore players out there, they're allowing your scroll escape to now be automatically consumed if you disconnect in combat. So it'll teleport you right back to a safe location. Reduce the chance of being locked into certain stats on a legendary item by reducing their overall enchanting costs. We will take that, of course. And then uh, this one is very interesting. I think this is going to be a pretty good change. So um, once you hit world tier three and four, normal magic and non-sacred rare items are just going to drop as crafting resources. So you don't have to worry about those. You, they'll just go in your bag as crafting resources. Um, I think this is a, a it's almost like a, a pseudo loot filter in itself because you really don't want to see any of those items anyway and tons of them are dropping on the floor so sometimes it's even hard to pick up the item that you do want to get so i'm definitely all for this um, i think this should be a pretty good change here and then gold drop rates um, have been increased to compensate for this so seems like they're trying to get you plenty of ways to get more gold and then the most interesting one was um, them changing the item power potential in world tier three and four so as you level up um, you're going to start to gain additional item power um, i believe it was two for every level so the range that your item power can roll on gear has actually gone up and it gives you incentive now to especially when you're in world tier four that you're not going to necessarily have your best in slot equipment right at level to 70 75 you know you're going to grind all the way up to 100 and as you're doing nightmare um, dungeon 100 there's actually going to be um, gear that drops at item power 920 that you can actually get now so um, this should it, it doesn't fix again it doesn't the, there's still core problems with the end game and the itemization these are definitely the band-aid fixes for them so i can't sit here and say like this is going to transform the game and change it but it does give you something to shoot for as you get into the higher levels of the game it gives you reasons and incentives to still run the higher tier nightmare dungeons um, again a lot of these things we'll have to see how they play out in the game but i think for now this is a good change while we're waiting for overall itemization fixes this is definitely good and then as well from normal whisper caches, um, you can get plus 10 item power and um, upgraded caches will give you plus 20. And then the Helltide cash rewards will be plus 20 item power too as well. So they're definitely trying to buff some of these other events, which again, definitely greatly appreciated to at least break up the monotony. They've reduced the time spent having to regain renown each season. All of that's gonna carry over. So no need to grind this out again i'm gonna tell you if you haven't completed it in season one make sure you get that done before season two um, earlier there was something that said this would not apply to hardcore characters and there was even a little slide jab like this is hardcore or whatever it said uh, they've since come out and corrected that um, so hardcore characters will have their renown rollover into season two mounts this is has been definitely like there's no point to even use the mount sometime um so they're definitely giving us a lot of different things that seems like it's going to improve the experience um, you're going to be able to sprint through barriers now um, your base speed is increased by 15 percent they're reducing the uh, cooldown to be able to hop back on your mount by 50 percent the manual dismount cooldown has been reduced from 10 to 5 seconds all of this is, is actually really good for the mount. So definitely should see some some good changes there. I don't know how often you use the horse or if that's going to change at all. There is a certain point where you're really not using your horse all that much. So we'll, we'll have to see. And then one of the ones that I think is just a great quality of life changes are all the adjustments to town. Um, they're adding stashes all around the towns now, so you don't have to run all the way over to one side of where where you are on the map to be able to stash your stuff. They're also going to be moving the Purveyor of curios Curiosities 
closer to the teleport um, and closer to the other vendors so they're not tucked in this back alley way off the beaten path. Um, my favorite one is they're adding a, the occultist to the Tree of Whispers because really that's the most convenient place to go do your stuff. And that's really all it was missing was the occultist, in my opinion. Um, you still may have to go to town every once in a while for like the jeweler and things like that. But I mean, while you're doing your runs and you fill up your bag, you know, you can go over the Tree of Whispers real quick. You can stash your inventory. You can salvage anything that you need to sell anything that you need to. And you can imprint your aspects, make upgrades. So definitely like the occultist now being at the tree of whispers so some really good quality of life things and then they've also added a search filter um inside of your stash so i would prefer a real loot filter inside of the game i mean as i'm stashing things away i try to organize it after a certain point but i mean being able to search for certain aspects or affixes on gear um, we'll have to see exactly how robust this is, but it's definitely it's definitely a good change. Um, don't get me wrong. I would have preferred a loot filter over a stash filter, but being able to search your gear is, is definitely a, a good change here. And then there's um, a few other changes here under UI and UX. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I did want to touch on really quick um, the new vampiric power. So you also have the season two new quest line. Um, it's going to relate around becoming a vampire and you're able to get these powers. And a lot of these look actually really good. I would say better than some of the malignant um, hearts that you could get. And these are available for all classes. Um, we'll need to do an in-depth dive on all of these abilities here and maybe think about how these can relate to certain builds. But I definitely think the way that they're setting this up is you're going to interact with this system it seems like throughout the entirety of the season where before with the malignant hearts like once you got your barber it was pretty much game over you didn't really need to do anything with the malignants again until you needed another barber when you upgraded your gear so and at certain points like you, you know you had two or three in your stash so this really to me sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a more robust season We'll have to see it in practice. It could just be exactly like the Malignant Hearts, but it has its own separate screen under your character menu here. Um, you have to level up these powers that are similar to glyphs here, and you need packs that go on your armor. So just to touch on that for a second, um, I do think that's a more interesting seasonal mechanic compared to what we got in season one. So just thinking about this all together, um, there was a lot of information here. I was impressed with the amount of changes that happened. I really wasn't expecting much, to be honest. I know they hyped it up, but they've been talking about managing expectations and not getting us too hyped up. And then they literally hyped us up by telling us there was so much in this that they needed two uh, streams to be able to cover all the information. Um, we still don't have the full picture yet. so. I do want to follow up with kind of a prediction video for what we might be expecting in the next video. Um, they've told us, obviously, it's around um, the balance changes with classes, uh, some of the new Uber uniques and abilities that are going to be coming into the game, too, as well. And then our damage buckets for crit, overpower and vulnerable, uh, the changes they're going to be making there and then how they're fixing resistances. But definitely want to do some predictions and maybe what, what direction they're thinking of going now that we have this information. But yeah, we still have a, we still have another stream coming. So definitely want to want to dive into what we can expect from that one. I'm actually, I'm very surprised by how much they had to share. I really thought, I mean, just hearing how the game came out that obviously they there wasn't a lot of time in between preseason and season one. So season one was already in the books and the way that they told us the teams were working, it was kind of expected to me that season two was also being concurrently worked on, you know, obviously before the game shipped. So I didn't think they would have enough time to really pivot on player feedback, but it almost sounds to me like they've been play testing the game and they see some of the problems here. I don't think this is the, obviously this isn't the overall big fix that we need, they did address itemization towards the end of the video is the first question of the Q&A. 
they didn't give us an, an exact answer. They just said that obviously they're working on it. They're looking into it, but we know that there's still something broken in the system between obviously having to look at every single rare that drops and your legendaries not giving you that dopamine hit because you know you're just going to imprint that legendary onto a rare item so you don't care you're just stacking the aspects really every once in a while there's a, a good you know really good rolls that'll happen on a legendary but obviously you're just looking for that rare item to imprint it on so that's obviously off um uniques definitely don't feel unique and they kind of can break your build sometimes there's certain builds that definitely need a unique in it but for the most part uniques usually aren't as great as the rare counterparts that you can get in, in printing aspects on top of those especially when you're looking for these specific you need your vulnerable damage you need your crit damage you need your crit chance like it just it's most of the time worthless for for the uniques and it's making you not as strong to put a pop one in your build unless it's necessary so you know there's still obviously some glaring issues i don't think those are going to be fixed because those are core gameplay mechanics i, I don't think they're going to be fixed anytime soon i think it's going to take a full-blown expansion i think we're looking at you know season four we're looking at past that into the expansion before something like that can happen more than likely but this again is a good step in the right direction it's got me excited to play season two and to see what's to come. I definitely was writing Diablo four off. I wasn't expecting that I would play season two. Um, I'm gearing up in the last epoch. I'm playing season 29 at D three. I'm looking back into jumping into maybe grim dawn again. So I really wasn't sure what to expect from season two. And they, they thoroughly shocked me by how, how much they've put into it, how many quality of life changes that they made. And it seems like they really are listening to the player feedback and they're trying to change the game. Now, on another hand, I mean, you've already lost some of your good faith here. There's definitely players that aren't going to come back. There's people that just are going to wait till season three, season four and wait to see what happens. But I think it has sparked the player base a little bit to be excited for season two. I know I am and I want to try it out. I don't know if this completely fixes things. I mean, there's not really much that they added to the end game besides the besides the bosses. So I do think there is a point of you're probably still going to get burnt out. There's not much to do past level 100 is still an issue. I'm kind of surprised that they, they didn't address that at all. Um, that's really one of the big sticking points is, you know, what is the goal that I'm setting setting myself up for when it comes to Diablo 4? I think is is the big question you know you come into a season with a fresh character and what are what are you looking to do well get to level 100 but then you get to level 100 and you know obviously at that point you could try to perfect your build get all your best in slot gear that you're looking for at this point you know you can try to farm the in-game bosses and try to get your uniques your uber uniques but then what are you doing like you know, you're already farming now Night Nightmare Dungeon 100 because there's an incentive to do so now. There's really no incentive to do Uber Lilith other than, you know, testing your build out. But you're either going to cheese it or you're going to have to really, really learn the mechanics. And it's not that fun of a battle, really, because, yeah, I mean, unless they change something drastically with how Uber Lilith works, like you're just... You're coming in to cheese, you're coming in to cheese it or with the build, you know, could take it down or swapping your build up completely uh, just for the Uber Lilith fight. So you do those things. You might mess around and dabble in PVP a bit, but they haven't made any changes to PVP and made that any more interesting. So, you know, there's still this question of, of what do you do? You made it easier now to hit level 100. So the grind is going to take a lot less time than it did before. And I suspect as we figure out how to min-max this, we it's really not going to take a lot of time to hit level 100 now. You're allowing us to stack multiplicative on experience bonuses. You're giving us the experience earlier inside of the battle pass. Um, I think there's yeah the, the still the looming itemization problem, and then the question of of the true end game like. You know, just getting to level 100 isn't necessarily where you want the game to stop as you've just made your character as powerful as you can. You got all your gear. Now, what do you what do you go do after that? Oh, make a new character. Well, you're going to hit that same wall again. 
like I do enjoy trying out new characters and trying out new builds, but I can't say that there's enough there for me to want to then come back in and grind the same nightmare dungeons over and over again, hop into hell tides over and over again. So I still think we're going to hit that same wall, but overall, I do think this patch is a big W they're listening to player feedback. They're taking what we're saying into consideration and they're trying to fix the game. Um, again, you can say all you want that. Yes, these things should have been in from day one. We know the game was rushed out. If you look back into like 2019 when they were starting to talk about the itemization system, there were some interesting pieces there and they had to completely scrap it from what we can see now and go with the most basic system that they could for whatever reason. I don't know what that reason was. Obviously something with the timeline that couldn't make it happen. Something wasn't working right, but they definitely scaled itemization all the way back. Um, I think once we get some set pieces in the game, I know that introduces its own power creep problem. Like you don't want it to be like D3 where you're just racing for sets. And then once you get your sets like GG, I, I, I don't know exactly what the fix is all the way, but I can definitely see that there's still the same underlying issues, but the foundation is there. We've got a good core of the game, but I mean, one of the most important things, obviously the items, obviously the loot that needs to be addressed. And then we need, we need more in-game activities. So I'm, I'm curious how these bosses really play in. Is it something that we're going to want to do? Are we going to grind this over and over or are, are they kind of one and done? Like, you know, cause you're going to have to farm up resources to do this over and over. And is that loop satisfying enough? Cause if you have to farm all four bosses to get the materials that you need to summon Uber Durial, like how quickly are you really able to do that? Is that, is that realistic to farm it over and over and over and over again? But I don't know. Again, I do think though, you know, we're a couple steps in the right direction. I do think they've righted the ship to a certain extent, at least that we know they're listening now. We know that they're trying to make the game better. We know that I think they're playing the game and testing it out so they can see some of the fundamental flaws and they're seeing it the same way that the players do at this point. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, your feedback. Um, what, what do you think? Did they knock it out of the park with this one? I think it was the best the best live stream that we've had on the game so far. Um, I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10, but you know, for my expectations, it's like an eight and a half, maybe nine out of 10. I, I, re I was really expecting it to be like a five or a six maybe. So they did exceed my expectations. There's still more room to go and grow the game and make it great. And yet to be seen if we're going to get there, but I think we are on the right path. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. What were your guys' thoughts on the live stream? What would you like to see in Diablo 4? Are you guys planning on coming back to Season 2? Let me know. As always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.